Hey there, good looking. Join me for this total body workout that's going to focus on functional training. So what the heck does that mean? Well, that means that we're not going to be just isolating single muscle groups. We're going to be requiring your entire body to work as a unit with the strength moves the same as it works when you're in day-to-day -day living. Now we're going to start with a core series to really work on focusing on stabilizing the core and then sort of get all that area fired up then move into a strength series, and then finish off with a dumbbell complex. Now, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about with any of those words, <laughs> don't worry. I'm going to coach you through everything. You will be a pro by the time we're done. Now, you'll need a couple of sets of moderate weight dumbbells. For reference, I have a pair of 12s and 15s. Now, also heads up, I am doing this workout in my bare feet so I can continue strengthening the bottoms of my feet, which do uh, weaken as we age. So if that interests you, you know what? Take your shoes and socks off and let those tootsies go. If you're doing this workout in real time, this is also day six of our 12 days before Christmas challenge. All right, let's go get warmed up. All right, now if you've decided to join me in your bare feet, I want to talk about a cue that you may hear me say in which I'll ask you to pick up your arches. Now I've said this cue in previous workouts and I'm always left with people scratching their heads going, PJ, what do you mean by that? How do I do that? So, you know, my bad, I haven't really fully explained how to do this. So let's just do a real quick demo here. So if you have your shoes and your socks off, all right, I want you to just let yourself stand regular. Now we're not going to be able to change the actual shape of your foot. So you may have a fallen arch. All right. You may have already high arches. What we're trying to do though, is change the muscle within the arch so that the foot is in good alignment and then therefore everything up the kinetic chain is. So from here, I want you to push into the ground with your big toe without lifting the bottom part of the toe off the mat and then root yourself in the back heels. Now fire up your quad muscles so that your knees aren't in like this. Now I'm really exaggerating for you to see. You want your quads tight and then your outer hip muscles tight so that when you look down, your knees are tracking over your second toe. So that is what it means to pick up your arches. You're not squeezing the mat with your, your uh, toes, okay? Your toes are actually spread and you're pressing that big toe mount into the mat, which is automatically going to activate the muscle under the medial arch to help lift it. And then we provide more stability by anchoring in the back of the foot so that we've got weight distributed front and back foot. Yeah? Awesome. Let's get down on the mat and get warming up here. I want you to take one foot and place it on angle and then start guiding that knee past the foot. And then let's take the opposite hand and place it behind the ankle so that we keep the ankle on the ground. We're warming into the ankle joint here for our squat and lunge patterns. Let's do two more. One more. Beautiful. Other side. Let's anchor the ankle, drive that knee over the toes, heel stays on the ground. Two more. Last one. Excellent. Now take this leg, just bring it out to your side, bring your hands in front, rock forward. As we sit back, roll the toe up towards your ceiling. Feeling this in the inner thigh, also activating a bit into wrist too, believe it or not. Let's do one more. Okay, other side, extend, arms in front. As we sit back, we roll that heel up, or that toe up, pardon me, onto the heel. Let's do two more. Last one, beautiful, and all fours for me, please. Left hand right behind the ear, bring that at left elbow to right inside elbow, rotate, look up, do it again. We're rotating through the mid back area and shoulder, waking up what we call your T-spine, your thoracic spine, 
for when we do our upper body lifts. Let's do three more. One more. Left hand down, right hand behind the ear, same thing. Try to really lead with the elbow and then follow that elbow with your gaze. Two more. Last one. Beautiful. On your back, heels close to your bum, hip width apart. Drive the hips up without flaring the rib cage and lower. We'll do six of these and then we're going to move into a core stabilization series, which is going to further warm us up as well as strengthen our core to help stabilize our spine. Let's do one more. Excellent. Now place your, your hands under your low back, draw your belly button in and feel the pressure between your low back and your fingertips. Extend your left leg. Now just lift your head up off the ground so there's no ab crunch. You're just lifting the head, feeling the abs fire up. Hold here. Three, two, one, lower down. Good. Do it again. So these moves that we're about to do are called the McGill Three. And these are the top three moves that Dr. Stuart McGill has found that are the best for stabilizing the spine. Perfect for all levels and osteoporosis safe. Just breathe. We're going to go through one more here and then let's move into a side plank. And come on down. Pick a side. It doesn't matter which one. Elbow under shoulder, bottom knee can be bent to modify. We're gonna pick the hip up off the ground, lift up off of that bottom shoulder, bring this arm straight out, or more advanced, we can stack the feet or scissor the feet. So Dr. Stuart McGill, if you haven't heard of him, I suggest you Google him, he knows his shit. <laughs> and he's Canadian, yay! Anyways, he is back in Toronto. And he specializes in spine exercise science, biomechanics of the body. So we want this top wrist lined up with the shoulder, top shoulder lined up with the bottom shoulder, elbow lined up with that bottom shoulder, so you're in one line. All right, let's do the other side. Again, we've got that option. We can be on that bottom knee, really helps out. Elbow under shoulder, so we protect that shoulder joint. We lift ourselves up. We find that length in that top arm, and then we line everything up. One, two, three, four. Good. And then we hold. Maybe we want to intensify. Feet stacked or staggered. Lift that hip. Moving into a bird dog next. So that's on all fours. In three, two, one. All right, go back to all fours like we were in warm up. Plugging those wrists under the shoulders, separating and really spreading the fingertips. Knees apart underneath the hip. Now I want you to push the ground away and round the back. Now let the low back sag and then go halfway between those. There's neutral. Lift your left hand, tap the opposite thigh, and then extend, leading with the thumb on that left. Do it again. Once you've seen me, I want you to then position the neckline lining up with the spine. And we're extending so both the arm and the leg are parallel to the ground without hyperextending your low back. Sometimes more is not better. So just find a length and a height that you can feel your back muscles working without any pain or pinching in the low back. Last one. All right, let's do the other side. Here we go. Plug those wrists right underneath the shoulders. In three, two, one. Right hand tap and extend. Good. 
Once again, we're going to lead with that thumb. It's going to point up to our ceiling when that arm's extended. And when we extend it, we're not jacking that right shoulder up towards the ear. Last one. And release. All right, let's do some figure eights with our wrists. You can come into a standing position as well. Just continue to get those wrists worked out. Oh, if you want a sip of water, now is the time to do it because we're going to move into our functional strength circuit. All right, we have five moves, three rounds, 45 seconds of work. I want you to grab a moderate dumbbell. Let me show you the move and then I'm going to coach you through it, okay? Dumbbell, and all you're gonna do is mirror me. We are gonna clean the dumbbell, so that means you use the hips to get it up to your shoulder, and as soon as it gets near your shoulder, you sink back into that lunge and then come up into the press. So I want you to mirror me, okay? Your dumbbell's in your right. Hip hinge, so hip hinge, use your hips to get the dumbbell up, and as soon as you get it up, you're in that back lunge, press it, and then finish it. Hip hinge. And again, we're in that lunge as soon as that dumbbell hits your shoulder. So let's go slow, slow. Okay, now let's speed it up, 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 good. So finish the lunge before you do the press. <laughs> If you're having a hard time, don't worry. We got three rounds to perfect it. This is a complex move, but it's designed to work many things at the same time, as I mentioned in the intro, like our body needs to do in everyday living. So we've got the other hand now. So it's a hip hinge, slight bend to the knee. We bring the dumbbell up because of that. Whoops, lunge, find your balance first, and then press. So back, rock it, lunge it, press it, breathe. That one looked really bad on my end, I know. You're gonna be like me, probably have one side a lot easier to do than the other. We're on my goofy side. So I gotta concentrate. <laughs> Now you might want to go down and wait to really understand the movement, but then go up as soon as you can, because believe it or not, going higher up actually kind of makes that clean part easier. All right, grab a little heavier weight. And if you want, you can double up as well. Let's go wider than shoulders, toes turned out, dumbbell held, drop down. I want the inside of the elbows, the outside of the elbows, pardon me, touching the inside of your thighs. So if you're unable to do that, get rid of the weight and do body weight only. And let's work on the strength to get near that bottom part of your squat. Knees are tracking with the toes. We're pushing down on the toe mound and pressing the back heel into the ground so our arches are lifted. You got it. We'll have a dumbbell in each hand in a plank position in the next move. All right, so we're going plank to bear and then a renegade row each arm. Now when I get to bear, modified people, you'll have your knees on the ground, intermediate advanced, you'll be hovering with me. So let's get set up into high plank. Dumbbell underneath the shoulders. Now walk the feet in. From here, you can drop the knees if you'd like and then row, row, step out. Walk the feet in, drop the knees down if you want and then row and row, okay? So plank to bear row. Dropping those knees to the ground if this is too much. Gazing at the top of the mat. Knees are just a couple inches off your floor, so if they're really lifting, I want you to try to bring them a little lower. On our backs with dumbbells in our hands, coming up. Time. 
All right, let's get into a glute bridge. First off, let's extend the arms straight up. They're lined up with the shoulders and just slightly ahead. Heels close to the bum, hip width apart. Roll the tailbone up, hold this bridge. Now lower one arm only. Elbow is below the shoulder, so not lined up with the shoulder. And we are gonna alternate our chest press. One arm is staying up though the entire time, so there's constant tension and that isometric hold while we move the other arm and breathe. Now we're moving into round two after this. I'm going to pick up my tempo a bit, but make sure you only pick yours up to where you can still maintain your form. Let's squeeze through those glutes, lifting those hips up, not working the low back with that. Elbows down, roll up, find yourself in a standing position. Dumbbell in your right hand. So we've got the single arm clean, lunge, press, okay? Three, two, one, here we go. Clean it, press, set up. Now our setup is knees are soft, they got to bend, bum is back, feet hip width apart. Other hand on hip, so you don't have to worry about that arm, all right? We're already coordinating enough. Keep that other arm out of the equation. Side view. Now I'm breathing with this. Oh, I forgot my press. Breathing. Okay, side view on this side. Remember our setup, feet hip width. We're into a bit of a quarter of a squat. We're not emphasizing squat though on this first part. We're emphasizing hip thrust, lunge, press. Hip thrust, lunge, press. Now remember that hip thrust, it's a hip hinge, right? Should be getting a little bit of a heart rate response to this. Functional workouts. Also tend to be more metabolic conditioning workouts, elevated heart rate. All right, goblet squat. I used one dumbbell in the last round. Now I'm gonna double up my 15s. Feet wider than the shoulders. Dumbbells pressing together, lower. Again, your goal though, elbows touch the inside of those thighs. Knees track with toes. Arches are lifted. Shoulder blades are pinched. Breathe. Moving into high plank with your hands on top of dumbbells in five, four, three, two, one. All right, so high plank. Remember, drop your knees if holding them in bear is just too much, okay? If you're with me on bear though, it's just a couple inches off the ground. Let's get the feet apart. Find that base. Step it in. Each arm rows. Step it out. I like to kind of reset my knees when I step them in. So reset, row. I keep my eyes on my knees too. You're gonna feel a lot of quad on this, especially in the bear pose if you're hovering off the ground like I am. Last one. Finish it. Woo. 
All right, chest press, glute bridge. So we start with the arms up, heels hip width, lift the hips without flaring the rib cage, lower the arm down, elbows well before the shoulder, not lined up, and breathe. So we're picking the tempo up a bit because we do have moderate weights. So probably a little lighter than what you would normally press with. Squeeze through those glutes, press through those heels. We're moving into our final round after this. Lower down, get up however you can. One dumbbell in your right hand. Feet hip width apart. I'm gonna go to my side again. Hip width, knees bent, thrust, drop, press. So it's my opposite leg stepping back to the hand that's holding the dumbbell. So right hand, left leg. Try and get a few more reps in, since this is our last set. Time. Whew. Okay, I think I got a right weight for my workout. How are you doing with your weights? Again, check in with yourself. Don't hesitate to change out mid-exercise even, all right? Here we go, feet hip width. Give me that thrust, catch it in the lunge, press it up. Thrust, catch it in the lunge, press it up. Good job, you. All right, goblet squat. Maybe you're doubling up your weight like I am. Feet are wider than shoulders. Toes are gonna turn out. Nice and tall on the spine. Lift up through the torso. Let's go. High plank to bear rows coming up. Two more here. Last one. Woo. All right, so high plank and again, on that bear pose, drop the knees if you need to. All right, set up. Wrist just a bit wider than shoulders, feet apart. Nice high plank, step it in. Knees stay close to ground. And see if you can remember which leg you led with. So for instance, when we go back out, go back in with that leg that was last to go out. I have no idea if that made sense. <laughs> Don't worry about it, you at home. I'm complicating the matters. <laughs> Just keep moving. <laughs> oh, my thighs are burning. Come on, last row. And bring her down. 
Woo. All right, one more exercise and we'll grab some water. So it's a chest press. Arms are gonna stay straight, heels hip width, lift up. Don't flare the rib cage, use the glutes, alternate, breathe. Tempo's a little quicker than a regular strength. Chest press. Good, push to those heels, get those hips up a little higher. Thank you. Dumbbells are above the kind of upper ab area and elbows are coming down to the mat below your shoulder though. Woo, all right. Come on up you. March it out, cheers, have a sip of water. We're finishing off with what's called a dumbbell complex, and then we'll stretch. Ooh, I need another sip. Okay, so here's how it goes. Four moves, very little rest. So I want you to grab probably the lighter of your moderate for me, please. Now we're gonna start with the clean, so similar to what we did, but no lunge. So you're gonna have both dumbbells, hip hinge, catch them to the shoulders, and when you catch them, you're in that squat, okay? Ready, here we go. So hip hinge, hop, good. Hinge, excellent. Now you can go wider with the feet and bring your dumbbells inside if you like, if that feels better for your hips. Actually, that feels a lot better for me. All right, this is my new way of doing cleans. <laughs> Sorry, power lifters. I know this isn't the way it's supposed to be, but sometimes we've got to adjust for our bodies, don't we? We have 10 more seconds of work. Very quick transition to shoulder presses. One more. All right. Woo. All right, you ready? Stagger your stance, press. Now to modify this one, go one at a time or hold on to one dumbbell with both hands. Otherwise, advanced people, you're with me, pressing up, stabilizing through that core area. So all of those stabilization exercises we did way back at the beginning were in preparation for this move. Last 10 seconds, and then we will rack our dumbbells and squat some more. One more. Ooh. Lucky for us, we're already halfway through the dumbbell complex. Rock them, bump back, good. Now I'm just gonna do a little squat. Things are feeling a little tender in my low back and I don't wanna push it. If you've been with me through the whole 12 days of Christmas challenge, you know I struggle with herniated discs in the lower lumbar, so. I keep working, but same as I cue you. No pain, no tingling, no numbing, no electrical stuff. All right, just good old fashioned, maybe lactic acid because of the muscles burning, but that's it. Ooh, we're almost there. I know, my arms are getting tired too. One more. All right, give me a hip hinge and hinge forward. Arms there alternating rows, or what we call piston rows. Now we're not coming all the way to upper body parallel to the ground because you only need to go about 45 degrees forward and that's where the big muscles of your back and the lower back called the rector spinae will fire up. Anything lower, you start hanging off of the ligaments in your vertebrae. And the rector spinae group, the muscles are designed to hold us here. This is our last 10 seconds, and then we stretch. Here we go, last four, three, two, one. Come on up, bravo. Woo, grab a sip of water. So yeah, really interesting fact. You sip while I chat. 
Okay, so this is about 45 degrees. And we need that when we're working, for instance, rows, because we need gravity to come down on the muscles we're training. So if I were to do that standing, not only is it awkward as hell, but I'm getting mainly upper trap and medial deltoid. It's not what we're working for, we're working for our back muscles. But if we start hinging forward more and then hold this position, now we're asking for all these little ligaments up the vertebrae to hold a significant load. And I'm not just talking about because you might be heavy. I'm saying our upper bodies are a significant hold for these little tiny vertebrae. So give your back a break. And when we do the rows like this, or quite often I'll have a bench. I'll cue you like I did. I think it was workout one. We did it with our hand on a chair. That's my favorite way of doing heavy rows. So I'm supported, tripod, everything's secure, everything's feeling good. All right, grab a sip. Too much information? Huh. I feel like I've really given you a lot to think about this session. I hope that it helps though, so, okay? That's that's why I, I coach and I cue, so that I can help improve your movement patterns, not force you into a certain way, just help you do it a proper way, whatever that proper way is for your body. Now let's get the left knee on the mat, lunge forward. Now give me a slight extension, squeeze that left glute, inhale, left arm straight up and lean away. There's no perfect way to move. We are all made differently. Our joints are different angles. Our muscles are longer than others. Everybody has different shapes and sizes. But we can train in a way in which whatever, however we're built, will be a safer, better way for us to do so. Circle the arm behind, other side. So our setup first is ankle lined up with the knee and then walk the foot forward just a tad and lunge forward to line that knee and ankle up a bit more. Now hinge back a bit so that extension I was talking to you about, that back glute is going to tighten up. That's what's gonna help release the front hip. We inhale now that right arm straight up, separating rib from hip and then lean away. Circle the arm behind, nice and easy. Ah, let's bring the arms out for me and walk the hands forward and have them about mat width. Sink your hips back, forehead to the mat if that's available to you and just hold. And let's rock onto the bellies, elbows under shoulders, hips drop down, looking up ever so slightly, feeling a stretch in the abs, perhaps some muscular tension in the low back as the extensors contract to do this. Now, if there's a lot of pinching and it's super uncomfortable for you, a couple of things you can do. One, you can press the bottoms of, or certainly me, the tops of your feet into the mat. That really helps me or you can walk the elbows forward. Alternatively, if you are a yogi and quite bendy, you may also want to push yourself straight up, keeping those ears away from the shoulders. Gaze is slightly up. Breathe. And coming onto your backs. Arms out, T position, palms down. Feet are mat width. Now, if you have osteoporosis and you shouldn't be doing any deep twisting, you're just gonna take a very gentle side to side motion. Everyone else is gonna do a deep windshield wiper, bringing the knees side to side. We'll go four times and then hold it to our left side for a breath. Here we go, bring it to your left, hold here. Now you can intensify that stretch by taking that bottom foot, your left foot, and place into the outside of the other knee. And then you can take it a bit further and add that twist into the neck by now turning away from the knees and looking at the right fingertips.
Again, osteoporosis, any of these twists, you're going to take it a very gentle range of motion. You may even want to have yoga blocks or pillows on each side of you so the knees just rest comfortably with the ground elevated for you. Let's release that foot, knees to the other side, gaze to the other side. Maybe now that right foot's on top of that outside left knee. And back to center, coming into a seated position, however is comfortable for you, rocking up or maybe rolling onto your side and using your arms. Let's get the legs in front, press the backs of the knees into the ground. And I want you to sit up nice and tall, what they call an L pose. So you kind of, you look like the letter L. Now for your L, you know, you might be quite tight and you may actually have to go back a little bit. So I don't know if that's an L anymore. <laughs> say broken eye no <laughs> otherwise you can use your hands behind and push yourself forward more but we are trying to hinge to the hip not the upper back feet are active gaze is just past those toes Now you can hold this stretch if you have any issues with deep toe bends. So if you have arthritis in your toes or bunions, just hold this. Otherwise, everyone else onto the knees. Spread the toes and then tuck them in. So you're gripping the mat with your toes and now sit back onto your feet. This should be uncomfortable. It's not often that we allow the toes to bend in the, this position. And it's also not often that we stretch the bottom fascia of the feet, which can really cause a lot of issues, plantar fasciitis being one of the biggest ones. So we're going to hold here for a few breaths and then go back in and finish for one more set. I liken this to how it must feel to lie on a bed of nails. Like that's how uncomfortable this is for me. <laughs> so I know I need it, but oh gosh. And come on out of it. Woo! Maybe just pad the feet there. All right, here we go. Last time. So really, really tuck all of the toes, pinky included. So if you have to manually go in there and get that little pinky bending, go for it. Sometimes she doesn't bend, does she? Woo! Second set, it's a little spicier. So we're here for 30 seconds. Now, obviously, as you lean forward, it's less weight onto your feet. Sit up upright. Whew, it's a lot more weight. Mm, I know. Don't worry. I don't really like myself right now either. I'm really not liking myself. I would rather do a million burpees than this. But you know what, you guys? We need this. Our feet are pampered too much in these beautiful runners that we own. And I own a lot of beautiful runners. So we got to keep them moving, keep them stretched, keep them strong and release. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Christmas came early. <laughs> All right. You did it. Hey, thank you so much for joining me. Listen, you can help this video out by clicking that thumbs up button so it can get found on the YouTube algorithm. Now, if you're enjoying this workout series and you'd love to continue working with me, and I hope you do, I really hope you do, then there's a couple of different places that you can find me, either at Over 50 Fitness, where all of these workouts, as well as a slew of other instructors are found ads-free, or you can stay on YouTube and come and help support the channel over on Patreon. We have all the information down in the description. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and we'll see you next workout. Bye! Hey there, good looking. I enjoy. <laughs> Let's do that again.